ambidextrous hot pink computer mice. Not really. These are shoe dryers, and the reason I bought them was because my shoes were absolutely freezing cold, uh, more notably the steel toe cap boots. And uh, if they ever get wet, it takes ages to dry them out. So I was looking for various things like shoe dryers, and I noticed that China was selling death trap shoe dryers. And uh, what really attracted me to these was that they advertised new shoes, dryer heating, dry boots, footwear, portable, UV disinfectant, uh, shoe heater, dryer, warmer, whatever. And um, yep, so they weren't that expensive. So I thought, well, let's give this a go because I'm very intrigued by the ultraviolet aspect. And here it says UV, but doesn't actually make any mention of sterilization. The instructions are quite helpful. They say, put the dryer into the shoes, connect with the electric supply. After that, the indicator light is on. Indicator light, okay. And the shoe dryer begins to work. No man watch is needed. It does not matter to put the dryer in shoes for a long time. Start to dry the shoes before you sleep at night and you will surely be dead in the morning. No, it doesn't say that. But uh, I'm not sure I'd actually want to leave these in combustible fabrics overnight plugged in. However, um, let's plug them in. Now, this also arrived today. I, I didn't order this. I haven't a clue why they've sent... I, I don't even know which supplier has sent this from China. It's just like shoelace or cord or something like that and I'm not sure what they've sent in place of. I haven't a clue. I hope it wasn't something, something terribly desirable like LEDs. Uh, I'll have to wait to see which parcel doesn't arrive to find out which what that was supposed to be. Anyway, uh, let's plug these in so I'll get the power meter. And an adapter. So let's put that to watts. And I've already ascertained that these seem to contain PTC devices because if when I plug this in, let's tilt this so you can actually see the display, it starts quite high at about uh, 200 watts and then it rapidly falls back and it keeps falling until it gets down to about 10 watts and it stabilises. And they certainly, I'll turn the lights off so you can see the marvellous ultraviolet glowing. Ooh, oh they look quite stylish don't they? Very futuristic. Um, and I have to say that the ultraviolet, I'm a bit suspicious because when you look up the end, it looks just like two blue LEDs perhaps inside there. And I'm not getting the smell of ozone you'd normally get from ultraviolet, which is how that kind of thing works. So these have currently reached about 16 watts. And as I say, if you leave them on, it goes down to about 10 watts and they get nice and warm. So I'll unplug that at the moment and we'll open one up. Now, I have to say, I was really hoping it was going to be little ultraviolet uh, units, because typically speaking, uh, you do get little ultraviolet generating capsules, and they, they're basically a little tube, either with an electrode at each end, or, or even just like the sort of um, Nini type lamp with the two electrodes. And they've got mercury vapour in them, but they're not made of... Um, they're not made of glass, they're actually made of quartz. And that means that the, when you pass a discharge through the mercury vapour, the nanoband ultraviolet actually passes right through, and that's how they make the germicidal lamps. And all you really need in series with them is a resistor. And I was thinking, well, that makes sense, because um, these do have a resistor in them, a high-power resistor for the heat, so that would pass uh, enough current to actually put out quite a bit of ultraviolet light. Um, another thing you sometimes get with uh, these lights is you sometimes get a auxiliary electrode going in that connects to the other end with a resistor. Oh, squiggly resistor. And the reason for that is it's much easier to ionise the gas between here at low current and it basically breaks down the, the voltage of the tube and it makes it light easier. But uh, that's all a moot point because I don't think there's any in here. So let's uh, open one of these up and have a wee look. quite robust units. They've got this nice little sort of splitter in the middle that uh, the one cable goes in and two come out, which is quite handy. What's going to be? What's going to be? Okay. There's two blue LEDs and the simplest possible dropper. 
The LEDs are wired. There's no rectifier. The LEDs are wired in parallel, inverse parallel. This is the PTC thermistor. Oh yeah, it's quite warm. Which is probably the similar type to the one used in um, hot melt glue guns and other applications like the self-drying um, silica gel humidity box. Hmm. Okay. Right. Let's take a look at the. Let's do the schematic for the ultraviolet section, which isn't actually ultraviolet, is it really? Let's plug it in. Yeah, two flickery blue LEDs. Hmm, and the the PTC heater, which is very typical of that type. It's uh, sandwiched in between. It's, it's wrapped in the... Oh, that's hot now. It's wrapped in the captain tape. See, I remembered the name of it this time. And then it's just sandwiched between two aluminium plates to allow for a bit of movement. Because these... Um, Devices are usually just a, a little block of the heater material, the resistive, that changes its resistance according to the temperature, with an electrode just sandwiched on either side. Um, so they're usually just packaged in this way, just sandwiched in, so that as they expand and contract in general use, they won't actually crack the material. So it's a, it's a common enough way. Uh, the LED circuit for the completely non-ultraviolet LEDs is... Live, neutral, it's going through a, well let's say that's going through the capacitor with a discharge resistor across it, which is nice. Through the LEDs, one point in one way, one point in the other way. And then a resistor by the look of it. So let's see what we've got here. We've got a 390k resistor there. Uh, what's this resistor? Oh, that's a bit hard to read. Black, green, brown. No, that's not. That's purple, green, brown. Violet, cream, brown. 750. That's quite an odd value. 750 ohms. I've come across a similar uh, rating resistor, but it's not what I'd call a, a super industry standard value. It's certainly not one I keep in my huge selection of resistors. Uh, there's 747 ohms, so that is a 750 ohm resistor. Okay. 750 ohms. Uh, what's the resistor, the capacitor now? One oh four, so it's a hundred nano. Seems quite small. Oh, two hundred and fifty volts. That's that's not rated well. I suppose ultimately these units could be aimed at a hundred and ten volt market because the thing about PTC thermistors is that the the temperature, uh, the heaters, is that they adjust. You know, if this gets used in hundred ten volts, it will put out the exact same power. Um, it will regulate itself. But, um, yeah, 250 volts is too low for that, uh, for a 240 volt supply, because our voltage peaks at about 330 or, or so volts. Uh, but at least there's a fuse in line. Oh, OK. So, um, yeah, interesting enough, but not ultraviolet. I will say, though, it, it's good value for these PTC thermistors, uh, these uh, heater devices, because I can think of lots of applications for these. They heat up, uh, I'm guessing, I, I'm not actually sure, I haven't stuck a therm, I, I should have left them on, I should have stuck a thermocouple on them um, to see what sort of temperature they stabilise that. I may actually leave a note in the description of this video uh, about that then. But yeah, you know it's actually worth it for these little devices because they're actually quite useful. Um, but uh, yeah, not, not, not overly keen in the LED circuit. And I might even, because they don't look too bad, I might even stick them in my boots. Yeah, interesting enough.